Meanwhile, I may invite the next speaker. Our next Dr. speaker Dr. would be Dr. Jihoon uh, from Korea. She'll be speaking about epiretinal membrane. Uh, when should we operate? Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank AIOS once again for inviting us and especially uh, Professor Sharma for putting together this wonderful symposium. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ji Yunan from Burame Medical Center. Today, I will be talking about epiretinal membrane. When should we operate? Epiretinal membrane is a common macular disorder and essentially cellular proliferation on the inner retinal surface. It has been called various names in the past, such as premacular fibroplasia, macular pucca, cellophane maculopathy, and premacular gliosis. The overall prevalence has been reported to be between 7 to 11.8 percent in large sized population studies such as the Beaver Dam Eye Study and Blue Mountains Eye Study. Increased use of OCT has understandingly contributed to the increased detection of ERM. A systematic review published in 2017 reported age standardized prevalence of ERM to be about 9.1%. This table shows the prevalence broken down into different subgroups, demonstrating there can be some differences according to the analysis setting. The major risk factor for ERM is increased age, since PVD, the main etiology for ERM, is known to increase with age. Cataract surgery is also a well-known risk factor since cataract surgery itself can induce PVD. A meta-analysis was done for various risk factors. Increased age and female sex were significant risk factors, whereas surprisingly smoking showed decreased risk. The main pathology underlying ERM is not clear, but pathological vitreal retinal separation and ensuing cellular proliferation are suspected to be the main instigators. Collagen fibers making up the vitreous cortex are adhering to the internal limiting membrane, also the basement membrane of the Mueller cells. When PVD occurs, some remnant cortex and hyalocytes are activated on the retina surface and Mueller cells migrate through small tissue defects and also proliferate, all forming ERM. On separation of the vitreous, the collagen fibrillae realign to form the posterior hyaloid membrane. Some of the vitreous cortex may remain adherent to the basement membrane and become activated with hyalocytes to form a membrane. A clinical grading system of ERM was proposed by GAS based on color fundus photographs. Grade 0 was no underlying retinal distortion. Grade 1 was irregular wrinkling of the inner retina. And grade 2 was obscuration of underlying retinal vessels with marked full thickness retinal distortion. The evolution of spectral domain OCT has enabled us to obtain high resolution cross sectional images of the retina. Many investigators have looked at changes in retinal morphology on OCT and its correlation with visual acuity. One study broke down retinal morphology into the presence of any abnormalities in the cone outer segment tip, the IOS junction, the ELM, ILM, and the presence or absence of a foveal bulge and pit. They found that on multiple regression analyses to determine independent predictors of visual acuity, the factors representative of outer retinal morphologic changes were the significant factors. Recent studies have shifted their focus to changes occurring in the inner retina with a new term of ectopic inner foveal layers, or EIFL, defined as the presence of a continuous hyporeflective or hyperreflective band 
extending from the inner nuclear layer and inner plexiform layer across the fovea region and visible on all OCT scans centered on the fovea. One study proposed a new staging system with the incorporation of EIFL as one of the main differentiating factors. Investigators have reported EIFL staging to be predictive of visual outcome after surgery, saying earlier EIFL stages are associated with better visual outcome and that when post-operative anatomic improvements were analyzed, those in the earliest stages showed anatomic improvement at one year, whereas those in stages 3 and 4 showed less improvement, demonstrating the majority of patients to remain in the same anatomic state even after surgery. The natural history of ERM has also been studied with the Blue Mountains Eye Study showing ERM progression in 29%, stable in 39% during five years of follow-up using color fullness photographs. In the era of OCT, about 17 to 39% have been reported to show progression. This table shows a summary of the natural course of ERM. The majority demonstrate relatively good visual acuity of over 2040, and 16 to up to 43% worsened anatomically. 8 to 24% of patients were converted to surgery with spontaneous resolution in 6 to 26%. As we all know, the mere presence of ERM does not mean surgery is necessary. Traditional indicators for the need of surgical intervention have been reduced visual acuity or the presence of metamorphopsia and aniseconia. The development of small gauge vitrectomy and technical and instrumental improvements are few factors which may induce surgeons to be more active towards surgery in ERM patients. Factors which have been reported to be predictors of surgical intervention are higher baseline central macular thickness, presence of external limiting membrane and ellipsoid zone disruption, loss of foveal contour, and metamorphopsia and visual symptoms at presentation. I would like to share two cases before I wrap up. The first is a 71-year-old female patient who was referred to me from a glaucoma colleague at my hospital. The patient had moderate degree cataract with visual acuities between 0.6 and 0.7 in both eyes. Fundus examination had revealed mild epiretinal membrane in the nasal paraphobia with hardly any changes in the foveal contour. So I recommended that he go ahead with just the cataract surgery. After six months, there was mild increase in central macular thickness. And after one and a half years, her visual acuity remained excellent with mild thickening of the ERM area. The second case is a 60 year old male who presented with decreased visual acuity in the left eye. His visual acuity was 0 0.6 in his left eye and he had only mild cataract. Fundus examination and OCT showed ERM over the macular area with loss of the foveal pit, disrupted retinal layers, presence of the ectopic inner foveal layer, but relatively intact outer retinal morphology. Cataract removal, vitrectomy, ERM peeling, and intravitreal triamcinolone injection were done. Over the course of two years, retinal thickness decreased and retinal layers became more visible. His visual acuity improved to 0 0.9. Now to wrap up. ERM is a common macular disorder common in the elderly due to the increased incidence 
of age-related PVD. High-resolution imaging using OCT has contributed to not only increased detection of ERM, but also the identification of various prognostic biomarkers predictive of visual outcome. Timing of surgical intervention still remains a topic of debate. The surgeon should consider the patient's subjective symptoms, assess visual function, not just visual acuity, and obtain objective analysis of changes in retinal morphology using OCT imaging and also discuss with the patient in detail the benefits and limitations of surgery before making a decision. Thank you for your attention.